sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming, and of the end of the world? Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Marvel not that I said unto thee, Ye must be born again. For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life, and he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. All that the Father giveth me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. And this is the Father's will which hath sent me, that of all which he hath given me I should lose nothing, but should raise it up again at the last day. And this is the will of him that sent me, that every one which seeth the Son, and believeth on him, may have everlasting life. And I will raise him up at the last day. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me hath everlasting life. I am that bread of life. And this is the record, that God hath given to us eternal life. And this life, is in his Son. He that hath the Son hath life, and he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered into the ark, and knew not until the flood came, and took them all away. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Watch therefore, for ye know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. Watch ye therefore, for ye know not when the master of the house cometh, at even, or at midnight, or at the cock crowing, or in the morning. Therefore be ye also ready, for in such an hour as ye think not, the Son of Man cometh. We begin this morning with two large out-of-control wildfires burning at opposite ends of California, leaving at least nine people dead. The campfire north of Sacramento has destroyed more than 6,700 structures and consumed more than 90,000 acres. Most of one town was incinerated. The Woolsey Fire near Los Angeles is smaller but threatens hundreds of thousands of people as flames surge toward the Pacific Ocean. Overnight, the Woolsey Fire showed no signs of slowing down. As homes reduced to their foundations by the flames toppled to the ground. Bone dry conditions and unrelenting winds have blown this blaze forward at a breakneck pace. Firefighters are struggling to keep up. People on the ground in this Malibu neighborhood watched yesterday as planes dumped fire retardant to delay the flame's steady march toward the Pacific Ocean. As thousands of evacuees scrambled to leave their endangered neighborhoods, bumper to bumper traffic piled up on California's Pacific Coast Highway, where just hours ago the fire jumped the road. Nearby, a student journalist at Pepperdine University took video as flames crested the hills above campus. And in a late night meeting with some of the school's more than 3,500 students, President Andrew Benton urged them to stay put. 
Up north in Paradise, California, it looks like a war zone. The town of 27,000 people was completely destroyed by the so-called campfire. Firefighters are just beginning the process of containing that blaze. At least nine people died in the flames, some in their cars as they tried to escape, and dozens more are missing. show wonders in heaven above, and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. Eleven days after the deadly campfire that started in Northern California, we are beginning to understand how it may have begun. California's largest power company, that specific gas and electric, is under new pressure to explain its actions before the fire. That fire, by the way, is now blamed for 77 deaths, and that number is likely to rise. Nearly 1,000 people are still officially unaccounted for. The wildfire has burned 150,000 acres, or about 235 square miles. It's destroyed more than 10,600 homes. Officials say the campfire is now 65% contained. A heavy rain moving towards Northern California is expected to complicate the search for victims in the state's worst ever wildfire. 870 people in the affected area north of Sacramento are still considered missing. The campfire is now blamed for at least 81 deaths. Search crews will work through the holiday weekend to find and identify more victims of the deadly campfire in Northern California. The search could take months. The fire killed 84 people. Another 563 are still missing. Earthquakes shall be in divers places, and famines, and pestilences, and fearful sights, and great signs shall there be from heaven. Earthquakes shall be in divers places, and famines, and pestilences, and fearful sights, and great signs shall there be from heaven. Great earthquakes shall be in divers places, and famines, and pestilences, 
and fearful sights, and great signs shall there be from heaven. Ye shall hear of wars, and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. Thousands of tons of fish have washed up on Iraq's Euphrates riverbank this month, all dead freshwater carp. And what killed them is still an open question. While unconfirmed, the incident is a dramatic sign of worsening pollution and water problems in Iraq. Carp is also a part of the local cuisine, and farmers are concerned that prices could double because of the losses. They've called on the government to compensate them. This man says 10 workers on his farm are now without jobs, a year's worth of work wasted. State media say additional tests are being conducted outside the country. shall the land mourn, and everyone that dwelleth therein shall languish with the beasts of the field and with the fowls of heaven, yea, the fishers of the sea also shall be taken away. It's okay. I'm Celine Dion. Our children, they are not really our children, as we are all just links in a never-ending chain that is life. For us, they are everything. But in reality, we are only a fraction of their universe. We miss the past. They dream of tomorrow. We may thrust them forward into the future, but the course will always be theirs to choose.
we have before us the opportunity to forge for ourselves and for future generations a new world order, a world where the rule of law, not the law of the jungle, governs the conduct of nations. When we are successful, and we will be, we have a real chance at this new world order, an order in which a credible United Nations can use its peacekeeping role to fulfill the promise and vision of the UN's founders. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven, I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell, to the sides of the pit. On to our top international story this hour, we are following some disturbing news out of the tech world. As this week, the Confederation of British Industry, or CBI, issued a warning about the future of microchips in the workplace. According to The Guardian, a British company has already fitted 150 implants in the UK alone. Biotech's chips, according to its website, quote, store a range of encrypted personal data from bank account details and passwords to medical data or Bitcoin wallet details. The device is implanted between the thumb and forefinger, and depending on which kit you choose, costs between 90 and just over $330. The CBI, which represents 140 trade associations and 190,000 businesses, told The Guardian, quote, while technology Technology is changing the way we work. This makes for distinctly uncomfortable reading. Firms should be concentrating on rather more immediate priorities and focusing on engaging their employees. The organization is concerned that employers could eventually force workers to be chipped the way you may chip your pets, for example. The Secretary General of the Trade Union Congress in the UK added, quote, microchipping would give bosses even more power and control over their workers. There are obvious risks involved and employers must not brush them aside or pressure staff into being chipped. Now, you might be thinking such concerns sound hyperbolic, but you would actually be sadly mistaken. Believe it or not, companies have already started microchipping employees. For example, a cafeteria kiosk producer in River Falls, Wisconsin, chipped employees last year. There are governments that run central banks. So they were the first, one of the first ones to call us to say that we've got to control our employees and we, we need to have certain access levels 
and we can't have that compromise, and they saw that as a solution. They need that. They need those controls. All right, George, how difficult is it really to remember banking information? I mean, do you think average people really want these chips? Well, I'm sure not. I mean, beasts are branded and slaves are enchained. Uh, This is, I suppose, the next stage. The wage slave will be microchipped. And the employer, imagine Amazon, just for an example, other brands are available, employing half a million people, every one of them, one day perhaps microchipped. So the company will not be able just to employ you at rock bottom rates. It will know how long you went to the toilet for electronically. Uh, I might even know what you did there. It is uh, grotesque. It is obscene. It is on the face of it ridiculous, except as you've just pointed out, it's already happening. And even here in Britain, it's happening. It's happening in the United States. It's happening in the tech industries already. And of course, it's all very well saying it's voluntary. But when you're a wage slave, voluntary doesn't mean much. If it's get this job and sign up for the chip or don't get the job, well, people will take the chip. But we know from recent times that what starts out as resolute opposition incrementally becomes the prevailing orthodoxy, and it would be uh, an Aldous, it would be a dystopian Aldous Huxley future if that's how we all ended up chipped by our employer. By law, every one of us must have a microchip implanted in the top of our hand and in our forehead. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. Life is real, Patty. Can't you see? That guillotine is real. Please take the mark. Who are are you? You do not want to take the mark. Why? If any man worship the beast and his image and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation, and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up for ever and ever, and they have no rest day nor night who worship the beast and his image, and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye, and believe the gospel. That Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. What must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also, and the works that are therein shall be burned up. And take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your heart be overcharged with surfeiting, and drunkenness, and cares of this life, and so that day come upon you unawares. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. For as a snare shall it come on all of them that dwell on the face of the whole earth. Watch therefore, for ye know not what hour your Lord doth come. Therefore be ye also ready. For in such an hour as ye think not, the Son of Man cometh. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ 
shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Behold, I come quickly. Hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. Behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me, to give every man according as his work shall be. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life, and may enter in through the gates into the city. For without are dogs, and sorcerers, and whoremongers, and murderers, and idolaters, and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David, and the bright and morning star. And the Spirit and the Bride say, Come. And let him that heareth say, Come. And let him that is athirst come. And whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely. Are you telling me that God has persuaded you that you need to be saved? Yes, sir. You want your sins all forgiven and washed away. Yes, sir. Well, that is something that God tells us he's more anxious to do for you than you for yourself. And here in John chapter 3 is a wonderful statement of that truth. Let me have you look on and uh, let me quote it. You read it so that as uh, you trust the Savior, you know you're doing it on the basis of God's word. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that's the lord jesus christ god the father gave him upon a bloody cross for ricardo and for maria and for myself for the whole world that whosoever again that's a big word it's a wonderful word what a blessed word big enough wide enough to let anybody pass through it into heaven whosoever that's good enough for you for you for me that whosoever believeth what does it say in him in him not in churches or doctrines or ceremonies or rituals but in the lord jesus why in him because he's the one who at the cross died the death that we should have died because the sins were not his they were ours the blood of jesus christ god's son ricardo and maria cleanses us from all sin. Do you believe that? Yes, sir. It's because God says it in his word and we can believe it. Should not, what's the word say there? Should not perish. Perish. That means, perish means to die and go to hell. You should not perish, but have, what's the next word? Everlasting life everlasting life life eternal new life life forever he alone can forgive you and save you and change you ricardo and maria and he will if you're prepared to ask him are you really yes sir you want to repent change your mind about going on in life without him or thinking that you could save yourself or or that you're too bad to be saved you have to repent change your mind about all those wrong ideas and be willing to trust that what Jesus did when he shed his most precious blood upon the cross for you, that he will save you right now. Are you willing to do it? Yes, sir. Would you pray this prayer with me? Yes, sir. Dear Lord Jesus. Dear Lord Jesus. With all my heart. With all my heart. I confess I'm a sinner. I confess I'm a sinner. I need you to save me. I need you to save me. And best I know how. And best I know how. Right now. Right now. I open my heart and life. I open my heart and life. To receive you as my Savior. 
to receive you as my Savior. My personal Savior. My personal Savior. Wash my sins away. Wash my sins away. With the blood you shed on the cross. With the blood you shed on the cross. For me. For me. I believe you rose again. I believe you rose again. And I receive you into my heart and life. And I receive you into my heart and life. This moment on. From this moment on. Forever. Forever. As my personal Savior. As my personal Savior. And Lord. And Lord. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 God's Word is what serves as our basis for knowing that He's heard us. Romans 10 says that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Did you just call on Him? Yes, sir. Then what did He do according to His promise? He, he saved us. Are you sure? Yes, sir. How do you know? Because the Bible says it. And if you have God's Word, the Bible, on it, you don't need anything else. God is true. God help you now to go on with him and learn of him through his word and he will keep on blessing you. Amen.